Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Father, as the beauty of this hour is now upon us to celebrate this life, the life that we so dearly love and had the opportunity to share it not only in family and friend, but to share it through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have given us such a wonderful and a gracious witness throughout this lady's life that you've loved her, you've cared for her, and now, Father, she's finished, but not finished in our hearts. And yes, Father, it's, it's a glad moment as well as it is a sad moment. We will miss her, but Lord, we need your strength. We need the power and the courage that the Holy Spirit can give us, even at this very moment, as our hearts have been expressed, both past and now present. We stand before you, and we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. For in his name we pray, amen.
For those that had the privilege to serve Christ with Sister Betty Moore, we can truly say that that midnight cry has been one of the greatest and most powerful movements that this life could face. <clears throat> God now has put her soul in a perfect tense. She doesn't have a past nor a present nor future she has her holy creator and her savior her, the Lord moved into her spirit as we've had opportunity to be with her throughout her suffering moments in the last days I do believe that her richest and greatest desire as she said it to her family members her loved ones and her children she said, I want to see you in heaven. She had no doubt that the moment that she was to leave this world, that she would be in the presence of the Almighty. Eternity now is her home. Kim made a statement when I returned back to the home this morning. And she said, you know, it's been four days since mother's been in heaven. I said, honey. I said, four days is our time. She doesn't have a time. The blessing of God has taken that miserable moment of time that dictates our life in every which way we turn, but not hers. That dictation's over with. She's in a place now that we are in hopes of. I remember ministering to her Wednesday morning of last week, and I looked over at her and I said, Ma, they're fixing to change your name. And she said, what's that? I said, you're going to be mother. She said, why would my name be changed mother? I said, you've done the Lord's will. And as even Jesus said, he says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Except he or she that does the Lord's will. And she did the Lord's will. I've had opportunity as a Christian and as a pastor of her for 37 years. And we've had some beautiful and gracious and precious moments of the Holy Spirit. When we attended service Sunday morning, I was looking at the piano. And I could see her image just as plain as if I'm looking at you at this very moment. Her hands would go towards heaven, both of them. And she would just be loving and worshiping God. And then, bless the Lord, she would play the piano as if her fingers were not even touching the keys. We have such a wonderful and precious moment in our lives to know this. She's not suffering. She has perfect joy. Her rejoicing will never end. Her heart will never sense anything but the love of the Almighty. She is where most true hearts of Christ would rather be. I was kneeling in her bedside, and I looked over at her, and I said, I'm jealous. She said, what's that? I said, I'd like to go with you. I said, what God has instilled in our hearts you're about to receive. And she did. But we have promised through the truth. In 1 John, it tells us this. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even the Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and what she possesses 
and eternal life. I have no regrets personally as her pastor or even as her son-in-law for the number of years that we have been in a relationship she's never had an unkind word or an angered moment that I can remember as her son-in-law and as her pastor she had a very sweet and a very meek spirit even the Psalms tells us about Sister Betty. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. And your heart shall live forever. What a beautiful place to be. To know that her heart is where it's supposed to be. That soul is living forever. And God has taken that heart which believed unto him and the righteousness and he hasn't imputed righteousness upon him. He's imputed himself. She is before him. I hope that for anyone that can remember her can extend the testimony of her days in this fashion. Remember her and the Christ of her heart. She lived these number of years to be where she is now. And God has so blessed her and so strengthened her. Not 91 years old, but eternally young. That's where she is. She's eternally young. You wouldn't recognize her. She doesn't show the age of time. Her spirit when she was given the breath of life from her birth, has never aged not one moment. And then it got the abundance of life through the blood of Jesus Christ. What more can we ask for than to have a mother, a parishioner, with this kind of testimony? And oh, how we will have days of memory. And they won't be a haunt or taunt to us, it will be a blessing. We will be strengthened remembering what God has done in her life and how she was used to magnify and bless us. Why well, I'm thankful for one thing. It sounds a little selfish, but i got to lay it out for you. When Kim and myself got married, we eat so many hot dogs. But my wife couldn't cook. But I mean, we really eat hot dogs. I'm telling you. I said, what we have for supper? The hot dog. But my precious mother-in-law took her off to the side. He started training her. If you read that obituary, he made a good baker out of my wife and a good cook. And you can rest assured I love her for that. I do praise him. What a wonderful blessing that that has been throughout the years. And today, Kim's her happiest when she's in her kitchen. And I'm her, I had my happiness when she's there. As far as I'm concerned, she can have it as long as I can get the benefit out of it. <laughs> but also, the psalmist is careful to tell us this as well. He said, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. But she can truly say this now. She can relate to King David. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and we've experienced that. We've seen the goodness of God, and we've seen the mercy follow her. But now, we're in hopes of where she's at. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He says this before I close. 
But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive me. And the psalmist rest. Selah. So is she. The psalm of her heart. The music of her capability. On this side of glory is at rest. She's met. The rest of life. May we. As in hopes. Of being with her again. Stand in the presence. Along with her. And rejoicing. And thanking God. For the privilege. That she will be in heaven. As she has been here. On earth. Bow your hearts with me. Father, our hearts are filled with true thanksgiving. As we just recently heard, she's finally home. And Lord, with that in our heart, we can leave here strengthened. We can leave here blessed. We can leave here with the courage to be able to stand through the trials of faith as well as the joyous moments and even in troublesome times. But first and foremost, we would like you to do one thing, Father. 
when it comes to remembering this dear heart, this precious life. Help us. Help us, O oh Lord, to be able to see a countenance that is standing face to face with God. She's no longer looking through a dark glass. She is plainly seeing the Father. And if we know that deep down in our soul and in our hearts, we can draw strength from that. And we will also extend the name that has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Betty Moore. We'll be able to extend her testimony. We'll be able to speak of her freely with a loving heart and an evangelical spirit. Father, I believe that our sister, as well as our kin, as well as our friend, has only went through the transition. She's more alive than she's ever been. And may we treasure that in our hearts. And if we know not the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, may there have been something here that has enlightened us to call upon his holy name. Because I want to honor what she said. She said, keep telling them about the Christ and help anyone to heaven that you possibly can. And let's fulfill the wish and the hope and the love of this heart when she said, please. What a loving expression when she said, please. I want to see you in heaven, for I am finally at home. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. Would everyone stand except the family as the directors come, please?